Hey there, my name is Brad. I'm the Harley Davidson Wizard. Today on the hoist, we have a 2000 Road King. It came in for a few brake related issues and then to do the hydraulic cam chain tensioner upgrade, the Screaming Eagle version. So the bike has 56,000 miles on it. I was assuming that it was going to be a disaster when I get in there, get inside the cam chest. It's not really that bad, but there is a little bit of carnage. So I figured I turn the camera on and show you guys the way that I do it. As far as a few little tips and tricks that I do with the Screaming Eagle cam plate when we're putting the new stuff together. This will probably be a two or three part series, so this is the first part. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.
All right, so inside the cam chest, even though I've already cleaned it out, I don't know if you can see, like, I came in here and I sprayed it through earlier to get the large materials out, but all of the oil is full of metal fragments and that's usually the way this goes. The crankshaft's not in bad shape. Uh, the little bearing surface here, or the bushing surface, is in good shape. And the runout's all good. Early on, like right when I start double checking that we have all the right stuff, I like to heat the cam plate up. And then once the cam plate's expanded with the, the heat, the bearings drop right in. Sometimes, like after you do 100 of these, you'll see some where the cam bearing spins inside of the cam plate. Like the engine gets up to temperature and then a certain situation develops where the press fit in here isn't tight enough. The bearing is able to spin. And that's why I like to heat up the cam plate. You, you just drop the bearing in. There isn't any material being like scraped or gouged off, off of the inner bore. And then it gives you a really tight clamp fit around the bearing and then we'll just put our bearing retainer on there so I do that very first thing and then let the cam plate cool off and then hopefully I would be able to bring the cams from the old cam plate and put them in here but as we saw this is pretty much kind of what you would expect for 50,000 miles the front cam chain tensioner is looking pretty good at least as far as it's being in one piece it's definitely worn beyond uh, its service limit the secondary cam chain tensioner is broken let me show you the parts so here's what is left of the old shoe and it was grinding through on this little rivet and then the chain itself, it basically, uh, yeah, so the chain was really just being tensioned by this piece of metal, which is exactly the way that it's not supposed to be working. So I've seen them in worse shape, but this one definitely isn't good. When it does all that business, it puts a heavy burr on the side of the, I don't know if you can see, but it puts a heavy burr on the side of the chain. And that's just going to eat up the new, the new uh, hydraulic tensioner shoe, you know, faster than it needs to be. And then the hardened surface of the camshaft has started worn through and it's getting to be pitted. So that's going to start wearing excessively here very shortly. So the oil pump's not that terrible as far as having all of that material go through it. A few nice little deep gouges in there here's where you really see like the brunt of the damages on the scavenge the scavenge pump you can see like a little bit of tensioner embedded right in there but you can see like all that damage that's all from little hardened pieces of metal going through there this side of the pump body doesn't look that bad the pressure side has some crap in it, but not that terrible. So I was really hoping to have a miracle happen and then have everything be in really good shape. But looks like we're going to have to order some extra pieces and then we'll get going on putting this thing back together. But I'm going to put this off to the side for right now and get going on something else. I don't know if I videotaped it, but you want to make sure that your inner cam bearings real nice and smooth before you install them in the motorcycle. I like to, to almost basically pack them with oil and then make sure they're nice and freely rolling before you go to press them in the motorcycle, but we'll do that all in the second part. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.